your wife ran away. What the hell do you mean by that? His voice was sharp and the other went quiet for a moment. I mean exactly what I said was she's not in the mansion. Her belongings are gone and the guards at the door didn't see her leave. We have searched everywhere but she is nowhere to be seen. His grip on the phone tightened. His frustration mounting. He could not fathom how she could have disappeared without a trace. Find her. Now. I want every corner of the city search. I don't care how long it takes. What it costs. Just find her alive. His mind raced well with anger, worry and frustration. Her disappearance was a bad omen, especially with the plan for the night looming ahead. If she was missing now, everything could be in jeopardy. His perfect laid out strategies could crumble at any moment. He cursed under his breath, his face clenched in frustration. How could she have vanished like this? Was she in danger or what? Has she run away because of him? This is precisely what I warned you about, Jungkook. He glanced up at her, meeting her gaze, his expression hardening. It was time to put his emotion aside and focus on the task at hand. Get the team ready. We proceed as we plan and find her now. His voice was firm. Despite the storm raging inside him, he knew he had to keep a cool head. If they were emerged from this situation. Jungkook stood in front of the camera, his eyes fixed on the monitor displaying various angles of the mansion. His fingers tapped impatiently on the console as he scanned through the recordings. His attention captured by a particular recording. It was a scene from earlier that evening, a conversation between him and his father. He was on the lounge, engrossed in a phone call, when he heard his father's voice. Turning around, he saw his father being wheeled in by Alex. He trusted. Soon, in confusion, gave a warm smile as he his father, Dad, what are you doing here? He walked towards his father and pressed a kiss on his father's knuckles. I want you to come on the meeting. His father stated simply, You didn't have to come here. I would have given you every detail. His father chuckled softly, I'm an old man, son. I got tired laying in the same place. Jungkook nodded, taking a seat on the sofa beside his father's chair. So, what's your plan? Everything is going well right now. He assured him, but now that you are here, let's proceed with our plan for tonight. His father thought for a moment and nodded. Very well done. They sat there, talking for more than few minutes until the topic was now shifting to Jungkook's personal life. So nothing in his life is hidden from his father. His father knows his son very well. How's everything going on with you? I heard a few things about you. Jungkook followed his boss. What thing? You cancelled for meeting this month? Jungkook sighed. Well about that, dad. I took care of it afterward. It was just some work. He avoided his bad case. Jungkook's jaw clenched in frustration as he scanned through the surveillance footage, searching for any signs of her leaving the mansion, but there was nothing, not even a single frame capturing her sneaking out. How could this be possible? When and how had she managed to leave without being detected? If she had left through the front door, there should have been a footage of her sneaking out, yet there was nothing. He couldn't comprehend how she could have vanished without a trace. Go through every second of the videos again. There must be something we missed. Check every angle, every corner of the mansion. Zebel won his car is fresh and grim, and as they raided their enemy quarter one by one, this was the moment they had been waiting for the culmination of nine years of patience planning. With each target they eliminated, he felt satisfaction. 
their enemy, the one who had wiped out the existence of June family, who had taken everything from them. Devo could not forget those nights when he witnessed murders, when he watched his loved one dying in front of his eyes. The image haunted him. They destroyed everything his father had built, reducing it to rubble. They had nothing left, not even a semblance of the life they once knew. But from the ashes of their destruction, Jungkook moved to rise again. Starting from nothing, they rebuilt their life. Brick by brick, he refused to back down to let their enemies win. He was determined to exact vigilance, to ensure that every person who had caused them pain paid the ultimate price. And this was just the beginning. He would stop at nothing until the last trace of their enemies was wiped from existence, just like they did. His phone rang and he quickly answered, hoping for some news from Alex. What happened? Do you have any news? No sir, we are still looking. Jungle cursed under his breath. Okay, he said shortly before cutting the call. Running a hand through his hair, he got yun yun yun. He muttered to himself. He was concerned more than angry, concerned about his safety than anything else. If anyone harmed her, he knew he would be drawn into madness. She was his priority, and he would do whatever it takes to ensure her safety. But right now, he was feeling miserably. Three days has passed, yun went missing. Three days had passed since Yoon went missing, or maybe run away, and Jungkook felt lost. Despite all their effort, there was nothing, a single trace. His mind was consumed with worry, unable to focus on anything else. Every possible lead followed, but there was no sign of her. He could not shake off the feeling that she was in danger, that something terrible had happened to her. Yet a small part of him desperately wanted to believe that she had not run away, that she was still somewhere nearby waiting for to be found. He wanted to believe that she would trust him just this once and not take any step that he had warned her against. His mind was messed and on the top of that he had been engaged in a mission to wipe out the enemy's existence but it was proving to be a formidable task. Their enemies were fighting back fiercely and Jungkook had lost many men in the process. Each day brought news of more life lost and in the back of his mind he couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. There was a nagging feeling that they were making mistakes but he couldn't pinpoint it. Their plan was smooth, clear and strong. They already surrounded the enemies and they thought that the victory was there because no one would imagine the attack if Jungkook felt like their force were already prepared. Jungkook had believed himself to be the one step ahead but now he is not really sure about it. The door to his office swung open and Jungkook eyes shot up to see Alex is stumbling in, his condition immediately alarming. His brows swirled as he observed Alex's bloodied hand clutching his shoulder and he rose and he shot up from his seat what the hell happened to you alex breath heavily his words coming out in gasp as he tried to explain the situation our weapon got her it's under attack they killed everyone he managed to get out jungle cursed loudly the news hitting him like a physical blow how did they found out about the place i don't know he admitted his voice barely above a whisper jungle paced back and forth in his office his mind racing, and how did you even get injured? Didn't I give you the task to find Yun? I heard there was a need for man, so I went to check if anything was alright. That's when they attacked, and how did you manage to escape? I was lucky, but I got shot in the process. Jungkook brushed forward as he listened to his words. There was something off about the whole situation, but he couldn't quite put his finger on it. We need to find out how they find out about our weapon quarters. I will do anything I can find out. Keep eyes closed on everything and don't let this happen again. Won't let you down again, sir. Get yourself patched up. He's drunk. He instructed his stone suffer now and then get back to work. He bought and immediately went away from there and Jungkook took his phone out of his pocket to make call someone. Jungkook's exterior remained calm during the ride, but his mind was in chaos. It had been four days since Yun went missing. Four days and finally they got months here. At a midnight, one of Jungkook men entered his room telling him information. Multiple instances of missing footage from the men's security cameras. It was the first tangible lead they had since, their, since her disappearance. And it pointed to a traitor within them. A traitor in his own mansion. It was unthinkable. Yet the evidence was glaring. They had identified two locations from the clues phone. Though, 
Jungkook could not shake the feeling that it might be a trap. Still, he refused to sit idly. When his phone rang, Jungkook wasted no time in answering. The other, the voice on the other end belonged to Yoo Jin, one of his trusted men. Sir, we have reached one of the locations, but there is no one here. The place is empty. Jungkook gripped tight on his phone. Of course, it had to be. Keep searching. There has to be something we are missing. I want every inch of that place thoroughly checked, and be on alert. If we don't know what we are dealing with, he cut off the call. Alex looked at his boss. He patched his wounds and accompanied his boss. Sir, we are walking into a dead trap. We should be more careful. Isn't it a bad idea? But if Yoon Nam actually ran away, I mean, it's been days and it's still no sign of her. Maybe she didn't want to live here anymore. Jungkook glared at him, making him instantly shut up. Every idea, every plan, every setback only fueled his desperation to find her. He could not afford to lose her. Not now, not ever. Worse, that's all they are. We can't afford to entertain doubts now. We have come too far to back down. We will continue with the search. We leave no stone unturned until we find her. And Alex, don't forget your place again. He said and finally gave him one glance clear, and Alex nodded immediately, keeping his mouth shut. They plant bombs in this building. We need to get out of here now. But Jungkook had already made up his mind. I'm going up. No, sir. We can't split up. It's too dangerous. Do as you are told. Search this place if you don't want to die in a damn bombing. I'm going up. Wait, Tom. What? I need to tell you something. It's urgent. I did something wrong. And do you think it's the right time to confess your sin to me? Do you want to die here? I don't know if we make it out alive. This building, but I will die with guilt if I keep it any longer myself. Bark it out already. Alex took a shaky breath. I was the one who betrayed you, sir. I was the one who gave away the location of the weapon quarters. I'm sorry, sir. I was forced. Jungkook eyes narrowed. His gun not trained on Alex. What the hell did you just say? I'm sorry, boss. But before she could finish his sentence, another explosion reverted through the building, cause cutting him off. I will deal with you later. If we make it out alive here, I will kill you with my own bare hands. He barked out and turned on his heels as he directed his team to continue their search while he ascended the stairs.
Mordek as he took in her brother's appearance. His heart was beating faster, fear started to crawl on him, fear of losing when she didn't respond. He cradled her in his arms, brushing away the lock of her hair from her face as he watched her struggle to open her eyes. Her voice, though weak, he held a familiar form as she whispered his name in pain. Gently, she muttered her voice very above her whisper. I'm here. He whispered back. Behind you, she muttered her voice barely audible if she were struggling to speak. Yoon rubbed her eyes as she tried to sit up, feeling the stillness in her muscles. She was feeling a little better now, but the memories of the past few days lingered like a dark cloud over her mind. Every time she opened her eyes, she felt like she was in a tie to the chair, deprived of food and water. She glanced around the room, her heart sank at the familiar sight of the mansion walls. It's been two days she brought back here, now she is feeling much better, but she tried to escape this place only to find her back in the confines once again. Her bad luck, annoyed that you are back to the place you tried to run away from, Yun flinched at the sudden sound, her heart racing as she looked up to see him sitting on the sofa, his legs crossed, expression stunned. His presence alone made her want to shrink away, to hide from the intensity in his gaze. Despite that, she summoned her courage to meet his gaze. Yes, I am back, she shot back. It doesn't mean I will stay here any longer. He ignored her voice as he walked towards her. How are you feeling? He asked his tone surprisingly, surprisingly composed. Better, she said softly, avoiding his gaze as she fitted with her fingers beneath the blanket. She was surprised he didn't burst out on her, but she knew he would soon. She had been testing his patience, pushing him to his limits. Jenna quietly took her hand in his. He began to remove the bandage from her wrist, her heart flirting nervously in her chest. He was awfully quiet and it was un unnerving. As she, as he changed her bandage, their eyes met. Even sorry, she could see the turmoil in his gaze. His, my, his eyes moved towards her cheek, and she felt the lump form in her throat as he removed the patch bandage from there as well. She curled nervously as he applied the ointment. Does it hurt? Not much. Good. She avoided his gaze. Her eyes flicked, fixated on her lap. She didn't know what to say, how to act in the situation. He finished tending to her injuries and leaned back. She shifted uncomfortably under his gaze. You are lucky to be alive, he said, finally breaking the silence. She didn't respond, unable to meet his gaze. She, she knew she had put herself in danger by attempting to escape, but she surprisingly couldn't bring herself to regret it. You wouldn't say anything? Jango questioned his voice calm. He followed her brows, meeting his gaze. What should I say? He tilted his head slightly. I was expecting an apology. An apology? For what exactly? 
This gives the man call that his watcher is standing in front of where he placed the box back on the table. You are determined to make things difficult, aren't you? She looked away from him only to him grab her jaw harshly enough to make her look at him but not enough to hurt her already wanted face. Do you have any idea of the danger you put yourself in by running away like that? Do you even realize how worried I was? His words lived with an intensity that made her heart sink. Because of your mindless sight, you put me and my organization in danger. Do you even realize how many men I have lost because of you? She felt a pang of grief, but she refused to let it show on her face. Instead, instead she kept her gaze averted and able to meet his eyes as he continued. She heard the edge in his voice as he spoke his tone turning colder with each word. You don't care. He started flatly. His tone laced with bitterness, his grip loosening as he stepped back from her, running his hand through his hair. You don't care about anything other than yourself. Maybe you're right. Maybe I don't care about anything other than myself, but can you blame me, Jungkook? Can you blame me for wanting to escape this suffocating mansion? Yes, I can blame you. I can blame you for putting yourself in danger. I can blame you for risking everything I have worked so hard to build. She looked away, clenching her fist. I, I didn't mean to cause any harm, okay? I didn't know that there was someone who would kidnap me, even if you did not mean any harm. I have told you a thousand times, Yun. I warned you a thousand times, yet you still acted in your impulse. Do you know how much worse it could have been? You could have died. Then let it be. Better than staying here and following your every command. If you are so afraid of losing me, why don't you start thinking about my feelings too? You don't love me like you are claim, but you are not scared of losing me. You don't love me like you claim. You are just afraid that if I leave, no one will fulfill your demands. The expression hardened at her biting words. His temper flared as he grabbed her jaw harshly, causing her to hiss in pain. She was testing his patience on so many levels. Watch your words. You have no idea what are you talking about. She winced at his tone, but her defense didn't waver. Oh, I know exactly what I'm talking about. You have been controlling every aspect of my life since the day I got here. Was lying about everything. Then, one after one, you imposed your rules over me. You don't care about me. You only care about your power and control. You are wrong. I care about you more than you will ever know. All I'm doing is to protect you. What do you think? What will happen if I let you go? You got this lucky time. You got lucky this time, Yun. But I can guarantee your safety next time you pull this stunt. So stop resisting and let me take care of you. Let me protect you. I don't need your protection. I'm not some fragile doll for you to control and manipulate. You're nothing but a hypocrite, Jungkook. One moment you act like you care, like you're trying to protect me, and the next moment you're suffocating me, giving it na giving it a name of care. Do you enjoy doing all this? She doesn't know. She doesn't even know at this point where the anger was coming from. She was tired, really. Maybe because her wounds didn't heal, because her body is aging. On top of that, someone is there to lecture about how wrong she is, even though what her fault in all this. The one thing she hates in her life is being controlled. An aunt controlled her life, and when she was free from that prison, she got into another one, and it was much worse. Where she doesn't even belong. As much as she wanted to believe his promises, they felt like chain. She wanted him to understand too, just like he wanted her to understand him. But things don't go the way you want. You think I don't know that? He snapped. His voice strained. You think I enjoy keeping you cooped up in this mansion? I do it because I have to. Because I can't afford to lose you, not you. She opened her mouth to say something, but closed it back. She cried when he spoke again. I lost my mother because of them. I almost lost my sister and my father because of them. He continues his voice, all of the pain. Do you realize how much worried I was when I saw you in the same condition? Her expression softened as she listened to his words. Her Anger beginning to wane in the face of his raw emotion. She could see the pain as when he says, Do you think I enjoy doing all this? He asked bitterly. Do you think I enjoy revealing the nightmares of my past? They killed my family. They destroyed everything I held there. You want to know why I acted the way in the beginning? It was an act of desperation, a packet of mental illness, all to protect the people I have left. 
He hated revisiting those memories. Hated the way he haunted him day and night. But most of the time, he hated that she couldn't see the depth of his suffering, and she never tried to understand him. I have spent years planning and working tirelessly to build this organization to ensure that no one else suffers the same fate as my family. You have no idea what it looks like to live with that burden. To wake up every day knowing that people who took everything from you are still there, thriving. His hand fell from her wrist. The tension in his body fell away as he took a step back. So don't you dare to accuse me of enjoying this. He spat his words dripping with panic. He held the door knob tightly, his knuckle turning white with the force of his grip. And the last thing you need to work on this attitude of yours. I'm trying to be patient with you. But don't push me. You won't even recognize me if I lose control. You only see my soft side, but trust me, I can be much worse. If you keep using that sharp tongue of yours, this is your last warning. You, the last time you will test my patience. Learn to live here because if I have to resort first, it will be far worse than before. Don't you ever think about leaving me again, because that won't end well. As the door clicked shut behind, she sank on the edge of the bed, processing everything. She had never imagined that Chunko carried such a heavy burden, that his past was stained with so much pain and loss. A wave of guilt washed over her as she brought back to her own actions. How could she have been so blind, so oblivious to the suffering he had endured? She accused him of controlling, manipulating, even enjoying it without even truly really understanding the depth of his pain. But despite the guilt, there was something else. Staring within her, a stark of rebellion. She still stand on her point. His warning was something she could not take lightly. She knew she he was serious when he was capable of unleashing a fury that she couldn't even begin to imagine.